I'm just making a little recording, mm-hmm. if that's okay. I just, Are you okay? I'm that's awesome. Going. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. I want my kids to meet you. Mm-hmm. Um, what about your first car? Uh, your first car? Or uh-huh. did you? Uh-huh. Yeah. My first car I bought in 1929. That was even before I went to high school. All right. I and my brother bought it together. We were working on money enough on some to get it. It was a, I bought it in 29 and it was a, what was it? It was. Probably a Ford? Huh? The, was it a Ford? Because they were Chevy. Chevy. It was mm-hmm. Chevy. And it was just a box. I call them right now, <laughs> just a wooden box. Up. Yeah, right. With windows in it. Yep. Yeah. But it was a nice looking car. It mm-hmm. was a nice looking car. And it was uh it was a year, it was just a year old, I think it was. And some uh, That's nice. Family him and I owned it. They swapped it. Nice. And the father that uh, sold it to me was my cousin. He was in the car business. Oh perfect, yeah. And he sold it to me and uh, I bought it for ninety-eight dollars. Oh my God! That was a lot of money back oh then. Oh my though. gosh! Nineteen twenty-nine. You take a. That's when my dad was born. I can remember when the Model T Ford, a nineteen twenty-five Ford, would go for four hundred. Wow! But I know. That's wow. what I know. Yeah. Jeez, yep. still, that's a lot of money back yep. then. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that Model T Ford, if you got low on gas, and you couldn't get up a hill. The only way you can get a is turn around and back to it because you get <laughs> Go back up, backwards. <laughs> back up and that would put gas up in front of it. Because the pickup was in the front of the tank. Yep, yep. Isn't that something, huh? Yep. Well, so I've seen people do that before. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't and it? And then it was all right for a few more miles. As long as they got up over that. That, yep. that hill. That is yep. something, huh? Wow. That's amazing. And technology back in those days has come along so fast. Oh, yeah. It has, no question yeah. about it. Yeah. We were actually in the horse and buggy days. I was going to ask you that, but yeah. I wasn't and, sure uh, if it was. We, we were in the horse and buggy days because most of the time you might see one car once on dog day. But that's all because mm-hmm. people just didn't have the money to buy. Yeah, right. I'll tell you about my father's. Well, we lived in Solon. That's where I was born, Solon, Maine. So, what are, what are and Solon. Solon. Okay. When we come out of Solon, Maine, we moved three times. Moved three times. We went once to get closer to school, and then the second time because my oldest brother was going to start high school. The high school was further out than that, so we moved again. And then the third time we moved from there to get closer to school so all of us kids would be. Right. And then when I got to the point where I started school, I only had to walk about three quarters of a mile. Wow. To get to school. Only three now, four all miles. All moving took place with a horse and buggy, right? All of them. All of them. Yep. All horse and buggy and wagons. Yep. Yep. Isn't that something? That's a lot of trips. And the most always you know the old fashioned I of course you never see them probably, but the old fashioned hay rack. That yep. they used to have to haul hay in and it was all loose hay. Oh yeah. Yep. And they used to build, put a load of hay on too when you haul it because that hay rack was probably anywhere from 20 to 24 feet long. Wow. And it's a big one. I'll tell you a little story I said I didn't tell you about the hay rack then. Huh? Did you tell me? I don't know. About the time we moved, the mother's act? Yes, I was hoping you would tell that story. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right. It's a good one. All right. My mother and a lot of the elderly women, a lot of the elderly women, all the women, they used to uh, buy these straw hats. Yep. And they used to decorate them themselves. With okay. Cherries on them. And Roses and stuff like that. Yeah. Put them on themselves. Dried, dried stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
many pearls. Well, we was going to make one move so we'd be closer to school, and that move was all probably damn close to a couple of miles away, I guess. I'd stop just wearing you because you're not close to where you be in the car. <laughs> But I don't call it's okay. That it's okay. That's all right. It's all right. <laughs> anyway, my mother had bought one of those hats, and she had stained it with the. They had a powder that they used to put in water. Okay. And that's what they used to stain the hat with. Really? So, so she'd done it in black. She'd done oh. it in black, and she'd put roses on it. That's okay. Yeah. Well, that day that we moved, we had the hay rack fall, and of course all of us kids were on the hay rack. And Dad was driving, he came up with Hunter Shaw. Oh. And that water came down over that hat. And oh. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, was all great. This street was black. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> of course, we all was laughing at her. That's so funny. And I can remember my mother, oh, she was so disgusted. She's so <laughs> embarrassed. <laughs> That's awesome. She was ready to kill you all, weren't she? Well, yeah, because we were laughing at her. <laughs> oh, oh, that's awful. Uh, Gosh, that yeah. the dye didn't, and didn't I stay. I was only about probably two and a half years old. And you, re so do I you see, remember that? You, you, little things like that, you see, you can remember. Oh yeah. my yeah. gosh. That's amazing, huh? Yeah. That's right. Look at mommy's hat, it's all making her face black. <laughs> Oh my gosh, uh, that's so funny. After that, we moved one more time. And that was to get closer to the school again. And I started school. I started school when I was five years old. And, and of course, I had to go on just about oh, three quarters of a mile again to get to school. I had to walk right. to school. At yeah, five years old. Yeah, there was no buses back in those right. days. Were yeah. you by yourself walking? Yeah. Yeah. By yourself, yeah. see? That's what they did. Well, of course, I had other kids walking with me. Well, I wasn't alone. Really. Right, but still. Uh, I had my older brothers, uh, Frank and Ivory. Uh, Gene, and the reason why we made that was because Gene, my oldest brother, was quite a lot older than the rest of us, and, and uh, he was going to high school. And he had to go. Well, let's see, he must have gone at least uh, close to two miles and a half to get to high school. Yeah. But we had a driving horse, and he used to take that driving horse, get up in the morning and take my father to work, which my father had to work about a mile and a half, and then take the riding horse and go to school. Hmm. And wow. they had a place down that farm to tie up the horse. And nice, up, yeah. nice. Ah, you know. oh, that's something, huh? And uh, that, that's the way we went to school. Uh, of course, I went to school the same way. I went to school in a one-room school. I was, I was going to ask you if they were all in one, yeah, all, all the same age together. Had nine grades back then, no sub-primary. No. Just nine grades, starting one right through. Right, yeah. Huh? And, and then the high school uh, was yeah. separate. Do you really? There was uh, no school buses. No. You had to, everybody had to make Walk. their own. Transportation. That's Walk right. or ride a horse, right? Yeah, that's just, <laughs> just about it. So w those horses stay outside all day, just tied to a, a pole while no, everybody's at school? No, most of, the, most of your kids, a lot of your kids live close enough to school so that they walk to school. Oh, okay. But anybody anyway, way off, they, they had a place they call, what was they used to call them? The liveries? Uh, living, the livery station. Or something. The livery. Yeah, like yeah, okay. And you could take your horse and put it in there, and they charge you so much for doing oh, it. Right. right. Parking, and parking we, lot. Right. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> would do that. As I, was, I would say, my brother did it all four years. Because of it. Wow. And then, well, I guess it got to the point. Well, we were walking two, two miles, two miles and a half. And then us kids all started walking to school. As we got older, we started walking to school. And that's why I ended up in high school walking to school. Because yeah. only, they were only going probably two miles, two miles and a half. That wasn't yeah. bad. That's yeah. not too bad. 
But we enjoyed that because we had a bunch of kids that would always, most always be Fun. going the same way. Fooling around and joking Raising around. Raising the devil and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> try not to get in trouble on the way to school, yeah, right? Try not to, and then that's happened. Too. I'm sure. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Does, does something stand out to you? Yeah. Like, yeah. You guys throw rocks, break a window or something? I remember one time, uh, Ivory was always. He, my old brother, my older brother, he was next to me. He was always raising the devil with me, and I'd raise the devil with him if I could. And I know that my mother, and I don't know what ever, wanted me to do it. And she bought a uh, half dozen of eggs down the store, and us kids had, had to take them home for her. Oh boy. So I, I knew that I really picked up those eggs and put them in his pocket, and that pocket was off the big heavy coat in the wintertime. And I walked on to him and I smacked him on the side <laughs> like And run like a son of a gun. It's <laughs> funny. And of course when I got home from the Asian book, I, I didn't get a very good reception. No, no, no. Oh, no, that's funny. <laughs> but I got everything back on him for a while anyway. Well, well, yeah. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Yeah. He deserved what he got on that one. <laughs> I don't know if I have, did I ever tell him the story about the biscuit? Nope. I never did? No. Well, this is... It's got us all in stitches. Ivor and I was alone in the house one day, and my mother had just cooked uh, a pan full of biscuits, and that pan that she held was at least 35, 37 biscuits. Wow. Ooh, yum. That's a big batch of biscuits. Yeah. And she cooked that full, and it might last a couple of days, but that's all. But she had just, just uh, cooked them, and they were hot on the sideboard. And she told us, as kids, we most always want a hot biscuit, we like to get into them. And, and I used to like put molasses on them. That's what I like, a hot biscuit with molasses. Molasses? Yeah. So this day, she told us, she said, you don't leave them alone, because those biscuits got blasters, and they will for supper tonight, you leave them alone, don't you get in at all. But I guess the minute she was out of sight, I looked at them, and I had to have one. <laughs> of course. So, have one. I uh, took one, and I would just keep putting the molasses on it, when I would say, Mom said to keep out of them biscuits, don't have one. Well, I said, I'm going to have one. He took that to me, and I said, you can't catch me anyway, because I could run faster than he could. <laughs> and there's a place up there where you run through, out through the barn, and there was another little shed you had to run through. And then there was a cow tire. And in that cow tire, you run right across and back of the cows, and there was boards across the front of another board that you jumped over. Okay. And when you jumped over that, then there was a beam there, old six inch beam, seven, eight, been to you, that went to another place that was, which was a pig pen. Oh, oh boy. And, uh, it's got a good ending. So I had done that many times playing tag. Nothing to it. No problem. No biggie. But this day I went over out there and I jumped over them boards just with the cow pen and I missed that damn beam. <laughs> and I had that biscuit in my hand. Oh. <laughs> And that drove that right into that pig shop. <laughs> <laughs> I would look out the door at me and say, eat it if you want to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just feeding the pigs. <laughs> oh my God, that's awesome. Oh, well, that's uh, the thing that'll happen to you. <laughs> that's a pretty good story. No, no, that must have, awesome. you must have smelled like pig mud. And I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what you, that's what you got though. But I uh, that's went to right. high school, got my high school diploma. <laughs> And after that, I worked in the woods for a little while. And when you worked in the woods back in them days, you went right in the woods and you stayed. Yep. They had hovels in there for horses, and, and they had uh, places for you to sleep. So you stayed right in the woods. woods there. And yeah. you yeah. cut, yeah. cut trees down. Yeah, cut trees down. My dad yeah. did that yeah. too. Yeah. My grandfather mm -hmm. did that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then after that, I got a job. Well, I didn't get a job really. I wrote to start to learn to uh, apprentice to be a barber. A barber? And I, yeah, I did. I barbered for a year in this college shop. 
and but I wasn't making much money. I was working for him, and he was paying a very small amount. Yeah, yeah. I just very much said I got the leftovers. Somebody wanted a haircut, and they was was in a hurry to take me. Right, right. So I wasn't getting much money out of it. Mm. So after I worked out for that year, I went to work on a farm. It was a farm because he had farm. He was farming, had cattle. Yeah. But his main thing was that he was delivering water. Mm. At that time, Waterville and Winslow and Fairfield, the water was taken out of a plate lake down there. And, Maine and their uh, water, huh? It was pretty poor, pretty poor stuff. Wow. Of course, they didn't have the the uh, way to fix the water then they have today. Yeah, right, yeah. It was almost right. just pure lake water coming right down and you, you drank it. Drank it, right? Mm. Well, they didn't have motor boats back then, did they? Huh? They didn't have motor boats back then, did they? Motor boats? Motor boats, yeah. Boats with motors on them? Well, they had motor boats, uh, oh, I'd say shortly after a while, but they were pretty old fashioned ones, I don't want to tell you. But they it weren't going to uh, pollute the water, yeah, except for uh, one line I used to call them. Right, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, on the back end of a boat. That, yeah. That, that roof, a wooden boat. That, right. They didn't have them this fiberglass boat or anything like that. No. So they were rowing mostly. Yeah, so uh, the water was going, good and clean. A lot, a lot of canoes. People yeah. loved the canoes back right. then. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So you didn't have to worry about pollution in the water, is yeah. what I was getting at, yeah. really. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you could drink water right out of the lake. My this fellow I worked for had a spring, a very good spring it was, mm. and uh, he used to sell water. He sold five gallons of water for twenty five cents. Wow, it's pretty good. And it was he he made racks for it, so they set it in the racks, and then you could tip the bottle in the, in wow. the rack. Nice. And of course I worked. With what few cows he had, I would put him in and delivered the water that he had. Oh, wow. Had an old 26 Chevrolet truck with a flat body bed on it, and that held 44. Really? Uh, 44 of those. Uh, wow. Uh, 44 of the bottles? 44 bottles of water. Wow. Yeah. That's, a, that's a lot. Five, five, five gallon. Yeah. Those are heavy. And so I went out and it was just like maybe you can remember this one. Uh, if you wanted uh, something from the bakery or something like that, they went around and had a card in the window for you to put up uh, so that you could see the card. Ours was just a big W. And that you knew where your customers was and you went around and what you looked for in those windows of them houses was that card. Okay. And if that card was up, you knew that they wanted water. So I you, see. You so W for water, the water. water. Oh, wow. Yeah. Isn't that so? You didn't have to stop at each place. Right, yeah. All you had to do was just know your route and know what the hot house it was. Hmm. Wow. So that's what I did for them. That's, that's when I got married. Oh, you met yeah, met one I, of the water I, customers. I, <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I got a story to tell you that. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's another story. <laughs> that's another story. When I was delivering that water, there was a lady from Stalhagen, who was my wife. Uh, she worked in a little kind of a tea room, and the motel they had five cabins, I think it was, that they used to let in the summertime. And there was this young lady that worked, worked there for him, and uh, every time I went by, I would see this young lady outside doing something, maybe just, she'd even be out raking the lawn for him, I'd see her. Yeah. But she'd be outside, I'd see her when I drove by with the truck. Well, I kind of liked the looks of her, <laughs> and so I uh, used to stop in once in a while. What's that? Last they called that they court, there. didn't they, back then? Huh? Isn't that called courting? Well, not yet. That's, no, not that's yet. formally. Oh, that's, that's, that's that's just. Oh, build it. Oh, that's delivering that. water with that's other purposes. Anyway, one day I stopped and just to get a, a package of dentine. Of dentine. Dentine gum. Oh my gosh, that was. I thought Wrigley's was the first. Huh? I thought Wrigley's was no, first. Dentine. dentine. Hmm. 
Hmm. What came into the thing because that took care of your breath and they just don't. Well, yeah, you got to have nice breath. Yeah. You're going to talk to the girl, right? And so I stopped just to get a bottle of some big thing. Yeah. And when they got through, probably the money might have been like five or ten cents for that in a team. Yeah, I passed her probably a quarter. And when she went to the cash register, she took to that money out. And the chain, but she held the chain in her hand and never gave it to me. So I didn't want to ask her for it. I was back when I didn't want to ask her for the chain, so I went out the door. Well, I hadn't any more got out the door for a seat to come over and to me and say, you, you forgot your chain. I said, oh, no, I didn't. I said, you forgot to give it to me. Ah, <laughs> nice one. And so I was talking with her then, and that's when I got up the courage to ask her to go to movies with me. And that's when our love thing started right there. Wow, that's and funny. And after that, everything was all out, yeah, nobody else. Natural, nobody else. just... So, all over again. Yep. Isn't that something? It happened as quick as that, and that's exactly the way it happened. That's awesome. We went together for a while, and then we was engaged, and we was engaged for two years. Two years? But in that two years time, the last part of it was a year that we, I rented I knew I was getting going to get married, so I rented a, my, my uh, rent where we was going to move into mm -hmm. at least uh, maybe eight, ten months before we got married and we furnished it. Nice. Yeah. She, she worked and I worked and when we got married, we went on a honeymoon for wow. that month right into our own home. Nice. That's called feathering a nest. That's, Oh, was that? That's, That's amazing. That's and a planner. I and my wife, we lived together for 57 years. Never had no bad scores, because I don't care who it is, you're going to have disagreement. Right. Yep. So we never had a bad score on call on it. Nice. Either one of us. That's beautiful. And we never went to bed at night unless we told each other we loved them. Never did. Those are so. good. Those are good habits. Wow. One of them should say, like love you, and the other one say, love you too, yeah. Yes. Very well, good. We, we say that, but we say more too. We say good night, love you, sweet dreams. Oh, well, we could have, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> I, what I really remember is just yeah. she's in and I say, yeah. yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That's important. Yeah. Yeah. And, and after I got married, I uh, worked for Noise Soap Company. Noise Soap Noise Company. Soap company. Yep. Okay. Was gas stoves and delivering stoves and stuff like that. Oh, wow. And actually, I worked in a place where they made soap. And actually, uh, where I worked, they made iron stoves and, and running themselves at a foundry. Wow. And did it himself. And I have, I poured the iron. Wow. No, so now that's a hot job. Hot job, I just did. <laughs> did you have good, big gloves? Yeah, you had thick gloves. And you Something had on your eye? That was, Glasses? It was uh, made out of uh, some kind of clay that didn't burn. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hmm. And they would fill that with that hot iron and just they had pouring holes that they poured into those. Wow. Now that stove we made, was, I don't know if you ever heard of the uh, Glenwood. Glenwood, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. We stole their pattern. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and, and you never, they and never went we to did court to steal for their pattern was to erase their name off of the oven door and put <gasps> our name on. Oh, my gosh. Now, the name of our soul was what they call the ideal man. Ideal man? The ideal man, yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. So there were no patents then. Uh, were there patents then? You know, you patent. You know, you said you stole their patent, but there were no patent pending. You know, the patents. Oh well, there's pattern, yes, because you have your soul. But any time that you, uh, 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 what is it they call it? They do. Design. 
Yeah, no, he doesn't like him too much. That's amazing. So you just ripped off their name and put on Ideal Man. Yeah, this, their name was written right across the yellow door. Yeah. In yeah. Iron. yeah. And all we did was just grind that off. <laughs> put, uh, put ideal on it. That's, wow. That's, yeah, that's what they call sealing the pattern. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, Isn't that something? But the rest of the soul, everything, everything about it, you have to have, in order to seal that pattern and get it into being stole, you had to have something different about it. Right. Right. And I do know what the name of it is, but I can't think of it. It was a word now. Hmm. That yeah. made it different? Huh? Some, that one thing that made it yeah, different? That one thing that made it Was different. it a vent? Or huh? was, it, was it a vent of some kind? No. Oh, the word. Just the word. A modification. Um, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Hmm. And after I worked for them for a while, a... Uh, it was a questionnaire. It was a occupational questionnaire. That the government sent out to all young people. A questionnaire? Yeah. Questionnaire okay. On them to, uh, occupational. Okay. So that they would know what occupation that you would work. It's like in. a census uh, or something. Yeah, right. So they knew what to put you in when they drafted you. Yeah, right. At that time, I had been this company that I had worked for. I bought a farm just out of Skowhegan here a way, and they put me up on that farm to work from the, from the soul company. That's why they put me with a plan of work. We were talking and about that today. Of course, when I made out the, the occupational questionnaires thing that I had to stand in, I put down that being a farmer. Right. And then when the war was broke out, I got a notice from the government Telling me that I could take any branch of the service or go or back on the farm board. Still be a farm. And I wasn't even back on the farm then. I changed, went to Finn Scott up in Dexter as a machinist. That's what I was learning to be with a machinist. Machinist. That's yeah. what he is. And <laughs> up in there, Finn Scott, they were working on stuff for the government. So I thought, that, boy, I was going to stay here. So I get a deferment. Right. But when it comes time, as I say, I got that letter from them telling me I could. Got drafted. Yeah, I could, you know, I didn't get drafted. To work on the farm. Uh, and they, they uh, told me I could take either the farm or go over into the summer. Okay. So I felt a little bit guilty about it because I had, of course, I had young fathers that was my friends that was going into the service. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to think that I was scared. <laughs> so I wrote right back to him and told him, I said, if you need me more in the service, then you need me in the, in the farm, let me know and I'll go. But if you need me more the other way, if you have a farm to do the service, let me know. Put me back there. Well, I got a letter right back and then a couple of days from him saying, you take your choice, either the farm or the service, or you will be in the service. So I chose the farm, and that's where I worked all during the war. That was about five years ago. Then. Wow. Yeah. So I went back on the farm, and I was lucky there. And I guess I might say I'm lucky about every job I had, really. What, what did you grow on the farm? What kind of food did they want you to well, grow? Well, what I done most of the time was cattle. For cattle? cattle. You know, okay. And milk. So when I went back on the farm, I went back to a place where they had about a hundred milking cows. Wow. And there was a farm of husband there, but he was getting through. And I worked for him about a year. And he got through and they put me in his husband of a hundred cattle. Hmm. And that's in charge of all the breeding because I worked all the rest of the time. And they had to take charge of all the breeding and what bulls they were bred to and all that kind of stuff. Wow. And then after that, I'd done that for five or six years. And then after that, <coughs> uh, I and my wife decided 
that uh, that that's when you work on the farm that's seven days a week right yeah and yeah you work seven days a week no breaks and it was made it kind of hard because we didn't have no time to ourselves we decided after a while that we didn't want to live that way for the rest of our life we wanted some time to ourselves so yeah right i gave them my notice in the fall of the end got through in the spring and they found a fellow to take my place, and I got through all the good and everything about it. Yeah. And then I came to Skullhegan, and my main job in Skullhegan, after I was an out of a job when I come to Skullhegan, but the main job that I had in Skullhegan was foot business, was the uh, shoe business. The shoe business. I got a shoe business. I got a job in the shoes. And I worked for them for three, four years as a, as a cutter, and the cutter. Cuts the, cuts the soles, cuts the, the uppers, the leather and stuff. Yeah, the uppers. Or the uppers. Yeah. And after about three years of that, all of a sudden, they took me and they started shifting me around in different spots. I was first I would be in the blasting room, and then I'd be in the packing room, and then I'd be in the stitching room, and they did that for oh three, four weeks at a time. And they did that for a good year or better. Just me you know, around one or the other. And I thought maybe they were trying to get rid of me. Mm -hmm. They had I plans thought. for you though, didn't they? They, were, they, were, they had plans for you. I guess so. <laughs> well, one day I got the, a call from the office. And I said, oh boy, I guess this is it. This is it, I'm getting fired. Yeah, I was going to figure out I was going to get fired. And I walked in the door, and of course I knew the manager well, and I said, okay, Bob. I said, what is it that, what in the heck have I done now? <laughs> well, he said, it isn't what you have done, it's what we've done. So I said, what's that? And he said, we'd like to have you go to Puerto Rico and set up a shop and run it for us. for sick down there for us. Man. So that's what I did in the last part of the shoe business, go down there. And and I ran that shoe park and build it up and run it for Oh, wow. Oh, well, that was a surprise. Yes, it was. Of course, when he when did it, I said, well, now, wait, wait just a minute, Bob. I said, this is something I got to think over. I you got, got a wife home. home. Pretty quick. I got a wife home and <laughs> something I got to talk over with her. Did you have kids yet? Huh? Did you have children yet? Uh, yep. Okay. Yeah, we did. We had Linda was old enough, so she Dinner didn't go time. with us. Okay. Yeah, Linda was old. We're gonna have to be going anyway, so it's your it's your dinner time, Grandpa. Huh? It's time for your dinner. I will be ready to stop. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we got to hear the end of the story. The end of my story. Yeah. We want to hear a happy ending. Yeah, and so I worked down there for. Four or five years. In Puerto Rico. What yeah. part of Puerto Rico? Because I live there too. Uh, I live in uh, Santa Man. And my factory was in what they call La House. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Had enough time down there lately, haven't they? Huh? Terrible. 